So mirrors, what are they and how exactly do they work? I mean, in a video game. Because I definitely don't want to get involved in the physics and mathematics behind mirrors in this video. Now you've probably seen a lot of mirrors in video games. Some can look better than the other. But how do they exactly work in a video game? We basically need to somehow create the illusion of a mirror in a way that looks believable. Now there are a few ways that games use to achieve this. First way we're going to look into is what I like to call copying. Basically copy whatever's in your level to make the other side but reversed. Now don't judge me by my level designing skills. This is just something that I put together for this video. But basically we have a mirror now. Wow, that was easy. Now you could try adding a shader to make it look more believable, I guess. But yeah, we basically have a mirror. And you know how much I hate games when they don't show the player in the mirror. So I copied myself too and changed a few lines of code. Now you could probably develop a logic that would automatically mirror stuff like enemies and some items. Now I don't claim to know the best way of doing things, or to write code that's flawless. So use this information as a hint and not as a must. Now to test the performance of this mirror, let's first test how the game runs without anything. So you can see I'm getting around 650 to 750 FPS on my PC. So now let's go ahead and try it with the mirror. And as you can see, we're getting around 450-ish FPS. And with the shader removed, we're getting around 500 FPS. Now, as much fun as this was, what about the other methods? You know, the process of duplicating every single thing in your level may not be possible in some cases, like a moving vehicle. So what do you do then? Well, think of it this way. A mirror is basically reflecting whatever light particle is hitting it. So we could use a camera to achieve a perfect mirror. So it basically works like this. The camera renders the level in its own view and then we can use those images on a plane to get the illusion of a mirror. So for example, I made this sprite 3D node and I'm gonna attach the viewport texture to its texture slot. And after setting it, we can see that we have the view of the new camera in our level. And so when I saw this first, I was like, we can definitely make a mirror with this, right? Well, kind of. You see, I did try to make a mirror with this, but as you can see, it didn't turn out very well. But my second version was actually looking better. But here's the thing, I used something really crazy on this one. I moved the sprite 3D with the player, which kind of works, but it's the wrong way of making a mirror. So after coming across this tutorial on YouTube, I learned that I could use the screen UV from a shader to draw the images on a plane. He also talks about where to put the second camera and stuff, so I recommend you checking it out if you want to learn more. But here's the thing, I didn't watch the video till the end because since I'm going to learn about mirrors myself, I wanted to write the code myself from scratch. But basically, the mirror's camera needs to be positioned according to the player's camera. So here you can see I'm copying the position of the player's camera, except for the x-axis, which I'm inverting, and then I'm setting the y-axis rotation of the mirror's camera based on the player's camera, and then just copy-paste the x-axis. And so you can see it works fine here, but there's a small problem. And that is, whenever I try to look at the corners of the mirror, everything just kind of breaks apart. I made some improvements in the code and now it actually works better but it still has some issues and very limited. Like for example, it is so limited that when you need to rotate it, you have to change the code so it mirrors the other axis. I wrote some code with sine and cosine to automate this process but it had so many bugs, I just went with this. You can tell me in the comment section if you know anything about mirrors. Now to test this mirror, I'm first gonna test it with a viewport resolution of 1024 by 512 pixels which gives us around 450 fps which is almost the same as the copying method i'm guessing it's because it's a small scene and also you can see if i don't duplicate the light sources i actually get closer to 530 fps so i guess it depends what you're copying now back to our camera method doubling the resolution however dropped our fps to 320 fps now, I don't think this method was really meant to be used as a mirror, but I mean, it kind of acts like a mirror, just a very bad one. The one that you can't see yourself in. 
and of course I'm talking about the screen space reflection. Now to use it you need to first make a material that's reflective and then you need to turn it on on the world environment. Now this method was meant for the reflections of the things that are already on your screen. So what's behind you is not really the part of this. Now you can use something called a reflection probe which you can use it without the SSR as well. It's basically a cube map. You can use this with something like reflections on a scope. But I really can't recommend it for a mirror in its real time mode because it can be very expensive so just put the update on once. So I played around with the reflection settings and I increased the reflection size and turned on some options on the reflection probe and you can see it actually doesn't look terrible. Let's say it's a mirror on a corner of a level, you know it could work. Just make sure to disable the layers that the dynamic objects are on so that they don't appear stuck. And after testing it, we can see that it gives us around 530 FPS, which is almost like the copying method. Now this next method can be quite demanding on the GPU, since we're using global illumination to get the colors of the mirror. And I think it only works with static meshes, but you should be able to use dynamic lights. Now even after increasing the cell size, it still didn't look great. Which makes sense, cause it wasn't really meant to be used as a mirror in Godot. But it can give you nice reflections and lighting, which is a win for me. And so these are the settings that I'll use to test the FPS of this method. You can see we are getting around 290 FPS, which is not terrible for global illumination, I guess. Now the other way to use the global illumination is to use Voxel GI, which is generally more intensive than SDGFI, but it also works with dynamic objects. First thing you need to do is to base your meshes. Now I got this weird banding issue on my mirror the first time I tried this but I fixed it by adjusting some settings in the mirror's material. I also increased the sub div size for the voxel GI to get more details. Now the scene would go darker for some reason when I increased the sub div. After testing the FPS we can see that we're getting around 80 FPS which is by far the worst performance. Now honestly you wouldn't really use this as a mirror anyways so it was all fun I guess. Now I came across this ray tracing add-on which looks like it might be able to do some mirrors. But unfortunately I think it's still a demo and you can't use it on meshes on your main scene. But it definitely looks cool and looks like it might be improved in the future. Okay so that's the end of this video I guess. I couldn't really find any other methods to fit in this video unfortunately. Thank you for watching till the end. If you like Godot you can subscribe or you can continue watching this video. Anyways I'll see you guys soon.